morning, welcome to Abundant Life Church on this the 10th of April 2022. Let's commit this time to the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you for this day that we have to be able to spend together in your presence. Thank you, God, that you are with us and that you will bless us, Lord. We give you thanks and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Our scripture reading today is from Psalm chapter 2, verses 7 to 12. Psalm 2, 7 to 12. I will proclaim the decrees of the Lord. He said to me, You are my son. Today I have become your father. Ask of me and I will make the nations your inheritance, the ends of the earth your possession. You will rule them with an iron scepter. You will dash them to pieces like pottery. Therefore, you kings, be wise. Be warned, you rulers of the earth. Serve the Lord with fear and rejoice with trembling. Kiss the sun lest he be angry and you be destroyed in your way. For his wrath can flare up in a moment. Blessed are all who take refuge in him. The Lord bless his word to us. Let us worship him. Come into his presence with thanksgiving in your heart. Oh, 
Let us uh, continue to worship the Lord with our gifts and offerings to Him. Let us pray. Father, we give you thanks, Lord, for taking care of us, for watching over us and blessing us, Lord. And we want to worship you now, Lord, with these gifts and offerings to you. And we pray, Father, that you would bless us as we give to you, Father. We acknowledge that you are the Lord of our lives and we owe all that we have to you. In Jesus' name, Amen. This Wednesday, we have our prayer meeting. And uh, Friday is a Good Friday service, okay, at, uh, at 8.30. So do join us for that. Uh, Friday is Good Friday. And uh, next Sunday is, of course, uh, Easter Sunday. Uh, so that makes today Palm Sunday. Uh, the, the day that uh, Jesus entered Jerusalem in a triumphant way. Uh, so they, they wave palm branches, some lay their cloaks on the ground for him to uh, ride over on, a, on the coat of a donkey and so on. Uh, so by tradition, uh, today is the first day of uh, what we call Passion Week. Uh, passion, suffering, uh, intense emotion right? in this week uh, of the life of Jesus. We commemorate that. We commemorate that. Let's turn to Matthew 21 and, and look at this account. Right? Matthew 21. You read from verse 1 to 15. Okay. As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethphage on the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and at once you will find a donkey tied there with a coat by her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, tell him that the Lord needs them, and he will send them right away. This took place to fulfill what was spoken through the prophet. Say to the daughter of Zion, See, your king comes to you, gentle, and riding on a donkey, on the coat, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had instructed them. They brought the donkey and the coat, placed their cloaks on them, and Jesus sat on them. Verse 8. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, while others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and those that followed him shouted, Hosanna to the son of David! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord! Hosanna in the highest! When Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred and asked, Who is this? The crowds answered, This is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. Jesus entered the temple area and drove out all who were buying and selling there. He overturned the tables of the money changers and the benches of those selling doves. It is written, he said to them, My house will be called a house of prayer, but you are making it a den of robbers. The blind and the lame came to him at the temple, and he healed them. But when the chief priests and the teachers of the law saw the wonderful things he did, and the children shouting in the temple area, Hosanna to the son of David, they were indignant. Father, we thank you for your word, and we ask that you bless it to us, Lord. We look to you at this time, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So there were the crowds outside of Jerusalem that cried, Hosanna! Hosanna to the son of David! And then there were the children in the temple area uh, who were shouting also, Hosanna uh, to the son of David. So outside the city, 
And in the temple area, they were they were praising God uh, for Jesus. Why? Because you know, he was the prophet who came from Nazareth. He had healed, right? Uh, in the previous chapter, chapter 20 and you know, verse 30 or something like that towards the end, uh, there were two blind men who shouted out to him. And he healed them. He healed two blind men. And they followed him. Huh? You know, they were so grateful. They followed him into Jerusalem. So the the crowds there, you know, that, that were following Jesus, they saw the healing, right? <laughs> and they were pumped up, huh? motivated, excited huh? that Jesus uh, was now coming into Jerusalem. Uh, the healer, the saviour, uh, was entering Jerusalem. So they shouted, uh, Hosanna to the son of David. Uh, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna. And so uh, they entered Jerusalem. And then he headed towards the temple area. Right? And, uh, you know, he saw huh, what in the verse 12. He entered the temple area and drove out all who were buying and selling there. He overturned the tables of the money changers and the benches of those selling doves. It is written, he said to them, My house will be called a house of prayer, but you are making it a den of robbers. A den of robbers. Why did he call it huh, a den of robbers? Because these people were charging uh, the pilgrims who came to Jerusalem. You know, some of, some of these, you know, as we know from uh, Acts, uh, uh, you know, Pentecost, uh, on the day of Pentecost, Acts chapter 2, that a lot of these people that were in Jerusalem for the Grand Jubilee, uh, the Grand Jubilee, uh, the the, the, the special celebration on the 50th year. They were from all over the world. The known world, that is. Huh? They were so, so many nationalities and languages uh, present. Right? And so these people uh, didn't, of course, couldn't bring their animals for sacrifices. Huh? So what was allowed was for them to uh, bring the value of those animals, uh, that value, the monetary value, you know, however, in our case, ring it, uh, in their case, it will be shekels, uh, to bring them to the temple or bring them to Jerusalem and then uh, buy the animals for the sacrifice. Right? Buy the animals for sacrifice in Jerusalem so that they could make the sacrifice. Uh, but what happened? Uh, den of robbers, meaning they charge high prices. Uh, they charge much more than the value of uh, the, the animals or sacrifices. You know, whether doves, uh, they probably wouldn't have had sheep and, and, and goats there. It would have been a bit messy. <laughs> but they had doves. Uh, we see that they had doves and there were money changers uh, to change the currency, the foreign currency into shekels. Uh, so that the shekel could then be used to buy the sacrifice, uh, so that the pilgrims could offer sacrifices to God uh, for their sins, for thanksgiving, and so on. Right? But they had turned it into a commercial area. They turned it into a marketplace. You know, you know what a market is like. Huh? Noisy. You know, people shouting. Uh, you know, come, come on, come on, my store here, special offer, special offer, and so on. Uh, whereas Jesus said, my house will be called a house of prayer. The temple was supposed to be a, a place for prayer. Now, you know, you, you had different sections of the temple. You had the outer courts, you had the inner courts, and so on. And only... The men could go into the inner court. Uh, the outer court was for women, children, uh, and then you've got the, uh, the entrance to, to the temple. And so what happened is that 
Uh, all this business that was going on, the buying and selling, uh, you know lah, uh, where in, in any market, it's never quiet, it's never silent. Uh, you have traders who are shouting, you know, uh, special offer, special offer. Uh, uh, buy one, uh, give you free one, that kind of thing. Or best quality, best quality here, uh, and so on. Trying to promote their goods. Or best exchange rate here, and so on. So they were noisy. Noisy. And the problem is that, you know, it's not like it's contained areas. Huh? It's all in the open. So whatever noise there was outside of the temple drifted into the temple. Huh? It, it made it for a very noisy place. Instead of being silent, con contemplative and, you know, prayerful, solemn and so on. Huh? So, uh, so Jesus uh, was angry at this situation and drove these people out. Uh, the buying, buying and selling people, uh, and then the money changers, and then the benches of those who were selling doves. Right? So you had all this commerce and business going on. That was not that that did not help people to to worship God, to come into His presence, huh? because it was so noisy. People, you know, I mean, if, if you had just spent a handling session, huh? you know, trying to buy a dove at the best price, and uh, you know, like, huh? uh, yeah, this one doesn't look so good, huh? a bit look like uh, disabled, you know, ooh, he's, he's, he's missing one toe of his leg, uh, and so on and so forth, you know, people trying to find faults in order to reduce the price huh, of that animal, of the, of the dove, right? You say, oh, the color is off, uh, uh, and so on and so forth, you see, trying to bargain. And if you spend so much time trying to get the best price and so on, uh, get the best exchange rate, and so on and so forth, I mean, you know, you haven't got the attitude to pray to God, to seek God, right? There's no peace. There's just turmoil, disturbance. Your concentration is, is gone. How can you concentrate on God when you've been concentrating on trying to get the best uh, sacrifice, you know, for God, right? So, Jesus huh, uh, drove, drove them out. Drove them out. You know lah, huh? they were not like 50 yards, you know, or 10 paces away from the entrance of the temple. I'm sure they were lining up beside the temple. So you could not avoid them, you know, in going into the temple. Just like KLIA lah. Huh? They built a shopping center huh? right next to the entrance. Right? So you cannot avoid the shopping center you know, if you KLIA <laughs> huh? too, you cannot avoid a shopping centre if you want to go uh, go into the the the, uh, uh, the departure area huh? to check in your luggage and so on, right? So it, it it takes you two or three times longer to get to the check in area because you've got to go past all these shops. Because you've got to go past all this buying and selling and commerce and so on and so forth. But at least at the airport it's quiet. Lah, huh? No shouting, screaming, not, not like a market. Hmm? But this had been turned into a rowdy area. Uh, at least in the airport there, you know, the, 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 the corridor, the area for walking the path uh, is wide. Uh, so you... You are not assailed by the, the sales promoters, you know. Ah, you know, holding up the goods and trying to push it in your face, that kind of thing. You know, if it was a narrow, narrow lane or whatever, you know, they could do that. They could bring it up to you and, and say, you oh, want to buy this, I want to buy this. Huh? Sometimes if you go past some alarm, you know, you'll find some people selling things and they, they want to promote it to you. Uh, they want to encourage it to, uh, to uh, encourage you to buy, so they will come and 
huh? stop, uh, uh, block your path even, so you have to go around them. So you have to face them, talk to them and so on. Huh? Because they hope to make a sale. They hope to earn something from you. Right? And that's what these people were doing. They were turning uh, the, the, the temple area into a market. Right? So that people could not concentrate on worshipping God. Huh? They were distracted by all this buying and selling, by all the promotion, the shouting and so on. Huh? And so Jesus drove them out. Huh? Drove out all who were buying and selling there. People buying, people selling. Huh? It could be buying uh, currency, you know, selling selling goods and so on. The whole thing was just a big mess. Huh? You had to pass all through this mess to get into the temple. Huh? Or at least the outer court. Right? And uh, of course the noise would drift in so that it would not be quiet inside. You would still hear the noise outside. Right? Because uh, of that. But uh, the children were in the temple area uh, and they were shouting Hosanna to the son of David. Why? Because in verse 14, the blind and the lame came to him at the temple and he healed them. Uh, they came to him at the temple and he healed them. Now, this would be outside uh, the temple itself. Because the blind and the lame are handicapped. So you cannot go into the temple. You can only stay outside of the temple because they are not complete. They are handicapped. They are blind, they are lame, and they are considered unclean in that sense. Therefore they cannot go into the temple. So they came to Jesus at the temple, outside the temple, at the entrance to the temple. And he healed them. Right? And this was after driving away all the worldliness. Huh? The, the, the money changers, those buying and selling and those selling doves. You know, when he drove them all away, that area became clean. That area became available for miracles of healing. Right? If they were still there, uh, yeah, he could still have healed them, but... Uh, the, the, the blind and the lame, the crowds, you know, the lame, uh, uh, they cannot walk properly. You know, either somebody carry them or they are holding onto a walking stick, uh, some kind of frame or whatever, to try and get near to Jesus, uh, wherever he was. So after he cleared the area of thieves and robbers, then the blind and the lame could get near him and they could be healed. What does that say to us? That means that we need to clear away the distractions. We need to clear away the corruption of the world so that we can concentrate on Jesus. So that we can receive healing. We can receive our sight and, and, uh, and walking huh? to, to be healed huh? of whatever we have. So we need to clear the decks as it were. Uh, clear the next so that we can be healed. We must make space for Jesus. Uh, and after that, the teachers and of the Lord of Chief Priests saw the wonderful things He did. This was a testimony. They saw, they could not deny He did wonderful things. He did amazing things, healing the blind and the lame. Uh, blind it means more than one blind. Lame means more than one lame. Many. And the people could see that. Uh, the chief priests and the teachers of the law saw the wonderful things he did. And then they heard the children shouting Hosanna to the son of David. And they were uh, indignant. They were angry. They were stirred up to wrath.
That is the response of the world. Huh? That is the response of sin. Huh? Because they considered him to be a rival huh? to, to their position huh? as, as priests and as teachers of the law. Right? They receive offerings and gifts from the people. Uh, when they, when they, uh, you know, offered sacrifices for the people on behalf of the people, uh, they would, they would be paid to do so, right? And Jesus coming and doing all these things meant that uh, they, 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 the, the people were all going to him, right? The people were following him and going after him instead of going to see the priests and the and the teachers of the law and so on. Right? Instead of going to them, they were going after Jesus. Because he healed. He delivered them uh, from demons. Hosanna to the son of David, who does wonderful things. Right? Wonderful! Because he is God, our Heavenly Father, our Savior who comes to us in our need, in our situation. Right? So, everyone, adults, you know, before Jerusalem, praising Him, huh? blessed is He, Hosanna! And now in the temple area, because He had healed the blind and the lame. Huh? He had healed the blind and the lame. You know? No one else could do that. As often as, as and as much as Jesus did. Every blind person who came to him, he healed. Every lame person who came to him, he healed. And these were wonderful things that he did for the people. Right? But the chief priests and the teachers of the law were indignant because he was affecting their popularity, he was affecting their income. Uh, if people don't go to the, the, the chief priests, the priests and the teachers of the law, uh, they don't earn, uh, uh, they don't get love gifts and commissions and so on uh, for uh, ministering on behalf of the people to God. Right, to pray for them and so on and so forth. Uh, so uh, they were indignant. Uh, we need to be careful that we don't have the wrong response uh, to, to, to one, the wonderful things that God does. Right? The wonderful things that God did, that Jesus did, they responded negatively. Sadly, huh, a few days later, there would be the chief priests and the teachers of the law would incite, huh, incite, encourage, stir the crowds to shout, crucify him, crucify him. Huh? They who on this day huh, shouted, Hosanna to the son of David, and the blind and the lame were healed. A few days later, they will be shouting, crucify him, crucify him. Instead of wonderful things, they would be doing evil things to the Son of God. So let's, let's be careful of our response to God, that we respond positively to God uh, and praise Him and worship Him uh, properly. Hands bow our heads. We thank you, Lord, that you came to this world for our sakes. Eh? And we thank you, Lord, that where you go, there is healing, there is deliverance. And we pray, Father, Lord, for all of us here, that you would protect us, that you would heal us, that you would deliver us. Eh? Help us, Lord, to not be distracted by the things of this world, but to clear away our minds, our souls, our spirits, and to spend time with you, Lord, that your presence may come fully to us. Help us to drive away the distractions of the world, 
that you may fully occupy our heart, our mind, our soul, and our spirit. That you may be worshipped, you may be praised, and you may dwell with us. And when you dwell with us, release your healing power into our bodies and heal us from every sickness, illness, and disease. We give you thanks, Father, in Jesus' name we pray. Let us close this service at this time. Father, we thank you that you are God Almighty in heaven and on earth, and that you are also with your children. You are with us today, and you will be with us till eternity. But help us, God, to be conscious of you every day. Help us to be conscious of your presence and, and your teachings, your word and prayer. Hallelujah. Pray to you, Lord, to bring your presence into our lives every day. That your power to heal, to deliver, to protect, to lead us, to guide us, to give us wisdom may work in us every day. We pray this, Lord, especially for our country, Malaysia, that your wisdom, your presence may be here in Malaysia to bless our country that our leaders may have wisdom and understanding. We thank you, Father. Bless us as we go. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. The Lord bless you.